Nobody cares about your GitHub project, and it is your fault. The good news is you can easily solve this problem. First, I will give you three steps on how to elevate the value of your project. Then, I'm gonna give you some actual examples on what we are talking about here. I will show you some gold standard top-notch GitHub open source projects. And last but not least, I'm gonna explain to you how your projects are evaluated during a job application. Now, before I start cooking, please take a second and hit like and subscribe to support the channel. Okay, now let me cook. Step 1. What do you think most projects lack? Coding skills? Honestly, nobody's gonna first dissect every line of code. This is not a coding interview, right? A cool name? Hell nah, you already nailed that with the String Blaster 2000 or whatever. So, what's wrong with your project? Your project lacks frame, a business case, and that's the main and only reason nobody cares about it. What do I exactly mean with this? Your project needs to offer some value in a real life scenario. A showcase of an optimization algorithm is okay, but imagine the same algorithm developed as an independent library, which then can be used in other projects. So let's say as a library to speed up some simulations. Now that's where we wanna go. So first step, it needs to offer some benefit for already existing products or problems. Only these kind of projects get attention. Nobody cares about something where strings are reversed or, I don't know, colors are printed on a screen. Step 2. You need to understand, only because you see value in it, that doesn't mean that others will see it. And that's why you need to make the value obvious right from the start. Beginners often ruin really cool projects by not delivering it in a nice package. Imagine you order a new iPhone, and then they deliver it without a charging cable. Wait. A anyways. And not only that, but also the mailman slam dunks it in front of your door. You get my point. So, how are you gonna do this? I'm gonna give you the main points that you need to take care of, so it doesn't go unrecognized because of bad packaging. First, your code needs to look as clean as possible. Your code has to look professional. If your code looks like some school project, people will open it and close it immediately. They will literally swipe left on you. No unnecessary code and no dead code. Your code needs to be commented so that someone can understand it from the first read. That being said, not too much commenting, but also not too little comments. Keep the sentences short and concise. Take care about indentation, make it look readable and also pleasant to read. If it looks like this, people will not read it. Nobody wants to decipher hieroglyphs. Try to use good coding practice throughout the whole thing. That means single source, no double code. Don't leave code in it that isn't being used. Especially take care of things like memory leaks. If you have memory leaks in the code or dangling pointers, I'm talking now about C and C++, Take care of it, use smart pointers. Of course, you can't deliver the perfect code and nobody expects it, especially not from you, but these small cues can elevate you from the competition. Now, second thing, make your GitHub README page readable. Write the introduction. Don't try to overcomplicate, keep it simple. The reader should be able to understand what the project is about in the first few sentences. If someone reads it and doesn't really get what's going on, don't expect them to try to decipher your spaghetti code. Nobody expects great code after reading a disastrous documentation. Write that down. The readme should include the following points. Intro, what I'm looking at, how to build a project, how to get it running, usage, how to use it, some release notes, something like version, new features, uh, noun bugs, undefined behavior and so on. Step 3. Now the third thing is try to implement the testing in your project. Automate the testing frameworks, show your test cases, results and so on. Doesn't really matter what testing framework you are using. It is only important to show people that you are delivering not only a world changing project, but it's also tested. You can either use Google Test, Catch2 or whatever. If you follow my three steps, I guarantee you, your projects will look much better. Okay, as promised, let's now take a look at some gold standard example project. There are thousands of very good and useful open source Git projects. We will together take a look at LittleFS. 
First, some obvious tells that a project is good are, the project has been around for a good while and is maintained regularly. You see sometimes projects that have been around for 10 years and still get updates every few weeks. The project has a lot of contributors. This doesn't mean necessarily that it's good, but usually projects with a lot of contributors are maintained and documented well. It has a good documentation. You can easily navigate through it, understand how to build and deploy it and how it actually works. LittleFS is a little fail-safe file system designed for microcontrollers. Let's now together scroll through the repo. Okay, you see the source code here but also a testing folder, some scripts and bunch of other stuff. At the top we have a brief explanation of what we are looking at. A very nice small ASCII drawing and the main characteristics of the file system. Then it goes straight to an example as you can see here. It shows how to include it, then comes the usage section, some notes, then a section with how the little FS is designed, then we have testing, licensing and related projects. This is a top shelf open source project. I mean, compare this to some garbage low effort project with no practical value that's not documented, not tested and so on. So, as you can see, it's not that nobody values projects, but it's more like most projects don't bring much value to the table. Now, listen, I'm not saying that every project should be on this level, this is not even possible. Most people will never in their entire life start a project with 100 contributors and maintain it over 20 years. But you can use projects like this as an orientation on how projects can look like and what they can become over the years. Some other superb projects that you can take a look at are, for example, Flat Buffers or Catch2. Okay, so now that you know how to create really good projects, well at least I hope you do, here are some action points that you can start doing immediately. You can first go and take a look at your existing ones. If you don't have any, you can start of thinking about what would you like to create. Is it some embedded project or is it some kind of algorithm stuff? But also think, how can I make this so good that people can't ignore it? Put some practical use cases in the description of the project. Compare it with existing approaches and also provide some data how it performs. Your project portfolio needs to be like a sales pitch. I know a lot of great programmers that are literally Mozarts with a keyboard, but their presentation skills are Nokia ringtones. I had some great ideas in the past, but they have been overlooked because my documentation was clumsy or my code was all over the place. So don't ruin great ideas by not wrapping it in a great packaging. Now, go over the points I mentioned above and think about ways how to make it more appealing. Does it need more documentation? Does it need unit tests? What about some visualization of the results? Can this be integrated in some existing products? Your projects are probably already good, but they need some nicer box. You need it to be wrapped properly. Trust me, this will make your Git projects get the attention they deserve, which also means you will elevate yourself from the competition. Okay, last but not least, let's talk about how tech companies look at your coding projects. Tech recruiters tier list looks something like this. Experience, degree, internships, other certificates and own projects. But this is also hard maybe. But since tech companies love publishing junior positions, we can remove the experience criteria. If you're ever wondering why do companies do this junior position thing, the reason is companies want to save money. And with the word junior in it, it's basically the same job but now with a 30% salary discount. Okay, anyways, as you can see your own projects are already not the most important criteria. So then if you calculate in that most people do projects that have nothing to do with the industry where they are applying to, they get even more invisible. And not invisible in a cool Harry Potter invisible cape way, it's more like invisible like in high school. So you need to be able to convince other people that the thing that you have developed has some value in it. It's like convincing your parents to buy you a new laptop so you can do stuff for school and yeah, like going to the library in GTA Online. You have to create something in the field of interest of the people to whom you are presenting your work. This is the most important thing. 
My advice is, if you already know in which industry you want to work, then it makes absolute sense to create something in that field. Making something that nobody has interest in and then wondering why you don't get any positive responses doesn't make sense. It is a good exercise. But don't expect people to throw money at your string flipper 2000. You have to keep this in mind. It is better to have one really good project than 10 smaller useless mini repos with no real value. Let's say you have interest in computer vision and machine learning and you could imagine yourself doing this for work. You can grab some microcontroller, get a camera and start coding and tinkering around. If you put every day one hour in this instead of doom scrolling, after 6 months, I guarantee you, you will have something really cool to show people. The key is to work consistently on this for a longer period of time. So, if you manage to create 2 good projects, or even one really good one, I guarantee you it won't get unnoticed. So, that's it for today. If you liked the video, please hit like and subscribe and see you in the next one. Tariq 10x.